basically dig a big hole in your garden right in the center big enough say about two or three feet square by about two or three feet deep chuck all your waste oil in there leave it for about five years and then you're going to have your own oil field Hello YouTube land, okay it's another day and it's another gorgeous day as well uh, apart from all the aeroplanes buzzing around in the sky God, they've been, I don't know what they've been doing lately but there's just been wreckies going on all over the place, dog fights and everything, right noise anyway, I digress so, another day and time to get some fresh oil in this little beast um, as I've said in other videos, I like to change the oil once every sort of 5,000 miles it was done in March and I've done around about 5,000 since then and it's just starting to smell a little bit petrolly so uh, it's time to get it changed so I've um, got to get it jacked up I've uh, got to get this panel off from underneath to get to the oil filter and the drain plug and uh, yeah get on with the job shouldn't take too long and you're going to join me for the ride so as you can see it's the height of fashion with um, oh let's do some advertising a Perkins t-shirt um, yes, I used to work on the tracks years ago and we were given these when it uh, was Varity Perkins, that's how long ago this was. Great for doing DIY. Um, so I said, um, got the oil change to do today. Now, a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy over oil. Um, I've used all sorts of oil over the years. Um, Castrol Edge is very good, but what is recommended by Artec, which are the, uh, the tuners uh, that specialise in Audis, um, is this stuff. Um, I am not sponsored by this company and uh, they do not give it for me for free so I've got nothing to gain by showing you this but just in case you're looking to change your S3 oil this is the stuff I, I tend to use it's Nano Drive by Miller's Oil uh, uh, CFS 5W40 NT Plus um, what I've heard is um, and I know this from all because Audi's have always done this the hydraulic tappers are very sensitive to certain oils and this stuff uh, is very good apparently at provide uh, i kept my words out there with it at preserving those um, seals in the hydraulic tappers and is the right oil to minimalize the gunking up of valves which everybody knows on the tfsi engines is quite massive so i've always bought the millers um i like the millers um <laughs> It's only a matter of time to tell if an oil is good or not, and that's when your engine fails. Uh, this one's done close to 118, I think it is at the moment. Still going strong, doesn't smoke, doesn't make any horrible noises, uh, but has been well looked after through the years. So I'm going to keep looking after it the way it should be looked after. Um, if you're going to drive hard, which I do now and again, you've got to put good oil in. So it's Miller's today. Right, waffle over. Let's go on. Let's get it jacked up and let's get that plate off and let's get changing the oil. So we are jacked up and as always, kiddies, don't forget health and safety. <laughs> get your axle standard in there just in case the unthinkable happens. So I'm jacked up. What I've got to do now is get this under tray off. Um, I'm going to turn you around slightly because these are the, the wonderful things that Audi think are a great idea. So basically uh, there's about three that side I believe and three that side. A little bit easier than the Weiss car this one. Uh, the Weiss car has a, a metal under tray which I've never been able to understand and for some reason um, <laughs> it's a lot more difficult to get off than these plastic ones. So on this one it's the plastic one so I'm gonna nip those screws off and then basically drop it down. Uh, the oil drain plug is upper there and uh, well actually that's the gearbox one no turn your lights uh, it's behind here so you will see the filter and the oil drain plug as soon as I get this off so that's the next job Literally uh, two minutes and that one's off. A lot easier than the Weiss one. Um, so right, let's grab you under here. So we have the oil filter just there. 
and nice and easy to get off, slightly different to the white Audi, that one comes on top. And the drain plug, much the same as the white one, uh, just getting the position, is just there. So, obviously the next uh, plan of action, <sighs> hey, hello, next plan of action is to get those cracked off, drain the oil out and then replace the oil filter, top it back up again. Simple as that. Okay, so I've got a feeling the bolt at the back is either a 17 or a 19, but uh, because when you're under there you don't want to be grabbing yourself another spanner, I've got a 17, an 18 and a 19, just in case. So, you can join me and let's see which one it actually is. Was I right with the 17? Do excuse the camera work, I've uh, got the cardboard on the floor just to make sure I don't make a mess on the drive as well. So the 17, it is not. Let's go for the 19. It's the 19. There you go. So there is the bolt. Let me just, oh this is not going to be easy. There's the bolt and there's the spanner on it and we're just going to crack it lefty loosey. Right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn the camera off because I can't do both at the same time. So uh, we'll take a long shot of this and you can see the oil coming out. As you can see they got the bung out and the oil was draining and just gonna let that drain off for about five or ten minutes um, the car as I said before the driveway is on a little bit of a slope so the car is pretty much level once you've got it jacked up like this um, but when that stopped draining there um, we'll obviously put the bung back in again the next job is to get the oil filter out so now the oil filter I don't know what this is or, or why it's there but this cap let me just turn that this cap comes off like like that. Um, I have a feeling that may be some sort of drain bone, but I don't know. I've never used it to, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm going to find a socket to to do that one. I think it's one of my big king dicks again. Um, if it isn't, it's something like a 23 or a 24, but uh, I'm going to find a socket for that one and then you can join me taking that one off. This is the bit where it gets a little bit messy, um, just like the Weiss car that I did in the previous video. You haven't got the cross member on this one, which is good, but you do get a little bit of seepage on the diverter valve and the fit here. So it, um, yeah, it gets a bit messy, hence the cardboard. Right, let's go and find the socket. So those that have seen my channel before, uh, I think it was on the Weiss uh, oil change video, will know this old beauty <laughs> is my, my really ancient old socket set, but it's the real big old stuff. Uh, a lot of it's Whitworth, a lot of it's uh, Imperial, but it tends to fit a lot of the big metric stuff now. And today's socket of choice is this one, which is um, 1328's Whitworth, I think, <laughs> which is probably no help to anybody whatsoever. Um, but these sockets have got me out of so many scrapes um, and the, the socket wrench is I think, a half inch or three, a three exit. I, I can't remember even what chuck size it is but these have got me out of the, the uh, dire many many a time and um, yeah they're made in England or oh, no made in Germany my god so um, yeah these are older than I care to remember to be honest but they're great so what we've got to do now is we've got to get that socket on there like that and then I'm going to find myself an extension bar and the, the down stepper to get that off and then we shall uh, put the plug in at the back it's almost drop dripping now and crack that filter off okay so I've put the plug in the back of the sump only finger tight for now but there it is in there that's back in again and this is one reason why you put cardboard down. Um, <laughs> I pulled the cardboard with the bowl on it and basically it went slosh slosh and it went everywhere. So the cardboard got it 
and the drive didn't. So yeah, cardboard works. Do yourself a favour. Right, um, <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. Oh, I don't want to slosh that again. There you go. So I've got my stepper. I've got my wrench. And now, this is where we give it a little heave-ho. I'm not sure I can do it with the camera on, but I'll try and point it in the right direction. So, ooh, heave-ho. There we go. So, I only put these on hand tight and just nip them up, but obviously when the rubber swells, yeah, as you can hear, it does, ooh, there you go again, it does mean that they tighten themselves up and don't leak, but yeah, can be a little bit of a pain to get off. So basically, what we're going to do now, get a hand in there, um, just needs a little bit more of a crack. Oop. Yeah, whose idea was it to do it with the camera in the hand? <laughs> Mine. So you can see it's just starting to leak a little bit. So we just loosen it off like that, get the bowl underneath it to try and catch any spill. Put my hand up there and basically twist it off. And there we go. That's the mess that comes out. And that is why you put cardboard underneath. Yeah, right. The filter seems to have stayed in place. Um, the canister is in my hand, so I'm going to pull that filter off, tidy up a bit, and you can join me for sticking a new one on. Okay, so I'll give that a bit of a clean up. I'm now going to grab the, is it Marl you call it? M A M A H L Marl. Yeah, something like that. So I'm going to grab the new filter and basically, very much like the other video I did in the Weiss one, I know I keep mentioning it but I have done a little change of hers already this year and video that, um, it basically just slips in there like that. What I'm going to do first of all is take the old gasket out because they do come with a new gasket. Um, I don't think it will leak to be honest. But it's, if you get a new gasket, you might as well change it. Um, it's going to swell. This one's already swelled, obviously, because you saw it you know, trying to get it off. It was quite stiff. It was quite in place. So I'm going to put the new gasket on, a little bit of oil around there. Put the filter in and then reinstall it back in the car again. Okay, so the new gasket's in and the filter just goes on like that. With a little bit of a snap in place like that. Now that's all it is. So then we crawl back under the car again. And obviously that's the position it came out of and that's the position it goes back in. Now always with any sort of canister like this take your time and make sure you're not cross threaded. It's very easy to do. They're plastic threads and you don't want to be cross threading them. It should go on nice and easy. Just like that. You can see how to jiggle it around a little bit. So never try and force it. Just needs a little jiggle like that. So that's hand tight. I'm going to just crack it up half a turn with the wrench and then tighten up the back bolt and then it's time to put some fresh juice in there. Okay so the oil filter is now nipped up, the bolt is nipped up and contrary to popular belief you don't need to hang off the spanner to make sure it's tight. What I tend to do is nip it up and then give it a couple of little taps with the palm of my hand just to make sure it's snug. You don't need to go mad. Remember that oil alloy sumps on these and alloy sumps will crack very easily if you hang off them. So you don't need to hang off it, it will seal. Right, so that's everything done there. Um, still got to put the plastic cowling back on again. But now we go to the top of the engine. And obviously that's the filler port there. I've got the dipstick out ready and waiting. It's going to take about almost five litres. Um, it's 4.6 or something along those lines. So let's get filling it up.
So don't worry too much if you're a little bit over. Um, as you can see there, I checked it a few times I was filling it up. So fill it up, keep checking your dipstick a little bit at the time. Don't go mad and put the whole lot in because uh, if you overfill it, it's going to do damage to your engine. So fill it, yeah, put about four litres in, round about. There's usually marks on the side of the uh, fuel, the um, oil can that you can see how much you're putting in. Put about four in. Um, I know this one takes about 4.6. Put that in, check your dipstick, take it out, check your dipstick again. And then when you get to the top level, that's about where you want to stop. Don't be worried if you're a little bit over because at the moment the engine hasn't started, which means the oil hasn't gained uh, full pressure, which means it hasn't flowed around the engine. When you first start it up and um, it fills up the, the filter that we just put in and then starts um, sort of taking it around the engine and distributing it, it's going to go down a bit. Um, so you want to run the engine just for 30 or so seconds, just to get the oil pressure up. Check your dipstick out, let it calm down for about a minute. Check your dipstick again. If it's near the top level, you're good. Obviously then, check it a couple of days later just to make sure. But at the moment, we're at about the top level. I'm going to put the cap on, going to start it up, see where we go. Hot in here. In fact, let's use the Audi trick. Hold the button down, windows go down. Shame the sunroof doesn't work. Never managed to have come that in. Right, so we've checked it's out of gear. Have uh, checked the keys in the ignition. Yes, we're all good. And there we go. So we started up. Well, the camera's going to pick up all sorts of rattly noises. Uh, believe me, the engine doesn't sound like that. Uh, it's very sensitive, this mic. We're just going to let it circulate around the engine for about a minute just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, visually check underneath the car. Um, and that's the good thing about the cardboard again, you can see drips. Uh, just make sure that the filter is okay, just make sure the drain plug is okay. Can't see any drips, looks good. Okay. So just going to turn the car off, like so. Yes, we don't need any of that, thank you very much. <laughs> YouTube will ban me for playing music. There we go, right. Just going to let it settle down for one or two minutes, uh, probably get myself a drink. It's a scorching day and as you can probably see, whew, I'm leaking. So let it calm down for just a couple of minutes and then going to put the scuttle panel back on again and um, put it down on its wheels. Job done. As you can see, it's probably took me, yeah, even with recording, uh, an hour. Not a big job at all. Nice and easy. Okay, so the panel's back on again. All bolted up nicely and uh, Pretty much it's settled for probably about five minutes now, so let me just grab a cloth. Let's pull the dipstick. Give it a bit of a wipe off. Like so. Drop it back in again. There you go. As you can see, it's now just under half. So as I said, what's going to happen as soon as you start it up, it's going to circulate around the engine. It's going to fill up the oil filter and you're going to lose them. So all we do now is a little bit of a top up, check the dipstick again and we're finished. By the way, before we finish, quick top tip. Now the waste oil. So obviously you're going to have abundance of waste oil if you are doing your own servicing. So here's a top tip for you. And uh, don't let the government know about this one. So what you do, you basically I'm not sure if I should tell you this or not because you know this is a big top tip basically dig a big hole in your garden right in the center big enough say about two or three feet square by about two or three feet deep chuck all your waste oil in there leave it for about five years and then you're going to have your own oil field you'll never have to buy oil again you'll have a custom built oil field now the government don't want you to know about this and don't tell the environmental agency as well because you shouldn't really be processing your own oil to try and charge your tax and everything on it. But yeah, chuck all your waste oil in a big, big hole in the garden. It will purify itself because the soil purifies it for you. And then basically you're going to have an oil well. And believe it or not, a little amount like this grows into about 100 gallons. It's amazing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> be environmentally sound and responsible. 
every recycling centre should have a waste oil dump. Make sure you don't tip it down the drain, you don't do stupid things with it like put it in the garden, you put it back in a container. I've got some containers here, these are waiting to go down to the tip. So put your waste oil in a container and take it down to the recycling centre. They're the ones that will process it for you. You don't have to pay, it's all free and it gets done in an environmentally sound way. The waste oil does actually get refined, reprocessed and sent out as cheaper oils. So you're helping somebody else out with a cheaper oil in the long run. But do not, do not, and I repeat, do not, because I've seen people do this. Do not tip it down the drain. Do not put it in a hole in the garden. Take it to your recycling centre. Please, be environmentally sound. Look after your environment. It's a precious planet, this. Look after your environment. Responsibly dispose of your oil in a recycling centre. Nowhere else. Cheers YouTube, hope it's been of use to some people. Um, now, put the car back on the ground, go for a drive, maybe get showered first. <laughs>